We now return to Let's Play Castle Vox. I've finally got the map going. Uh, as you can see, the over map is here. The uh, overground, as it is called. So, to recap, first thing you do, draw all the shapes over your tracing uh, map. Edit the countries, move them around, make the connections. I've made all the connections. And uh, there's quite a few. I made uh, Umbar connect to here, but not to the coast of Gondor. I thought about it, but it gave these guys too much of an advantage. Because Gondor just cannot stand against Mordor and uh, the Haradrim. I don't think. I mean, I haven't tested it yet. Um, so there's that. Set all the country names, as well as their starting, uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, the starting units. You can see the custom icons that I've made. I'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, I have actually made, if you come up here, to uh, yeah, resize the map. I made it a little bit bigger, which gave the icons a little bit more of uh, room to go around, and it's still pretty crowded, especially when multiple armies get in there, like when your allies get into the territory, uh, their icons also show up, and that's something I didn't really anticipate. But uh, the map is big enough. Let's see. Here are the continents. I added a bunch of neutral continents that uh, are not controlled by anyone. There are ten different players. Yeah, let's look at the Vox unit points. I mean, it's a just a mess. Uh, map info. Right, so when you do this, uh, you can give your map a name. Uh, don't mess with the width and height because that is, I mean, it, it's already based on uh, your initial map when you put it in. And so when you do that, uh, make your map larger and smaller. Uh, it sort of corrects it for you. So I wouldn't do that unless you really wanted to fine-tune it. Uh, the theme here is important, and uh, I will talk about this in a minute, but basically you want this to point to the uh, folder where your theme is, and the theme is what contains the background and the foreground and the little icons and by default it's black, but uh, we want it to point at War of the Ring. And you can put all your other info in here if you want. And scenario player info. So I briefly touched on this. Here are all the players. And there are two teams, the Free Peoples and the Forces of Sauron. Uh, it begins with... Uh, nine players. That's sort of the default, is nine players. But I found that as I filled in, uh, it would add extra slots. As far as I know, there is no maximum uh, for the number of players that you can have. So that is good. Uh, I guess that's all for the map. Yeah. Uh, I didn't add borders to my over map, which might have made some of this look a little bit cleaner, but yeah, this took long enough. Anyway, uh, so when you've got it done and you save it, it will save by default to the map, well, it'll save the map anyway, to the default uh, folder. But the way you find it, it's in your CastleVox folder support and here are all the maps so this is where you will find it but 
to get a few other things, you need to add them in yourself. And wow, this really screws it up. Okay. So, uh, in your themes folder here, this is where you make a folder and just, you know, I named it with my, uh, my name and then the map name. And inside, I've got the various PNG files, and they have to be a PNG file. So I've got the foreground, uh, which is a grayscale texture, and this is what shows up behind the, uh, no, get rid of that, behind the color. And, uh, yeah, I just quickly threw something together like that. There is, no, stop that. And then there is the overground, and you have to name them foreground, overground, unit, castle, knight, and pawn. You have to name them like this so that the game recognizes them. So this is the overground, and this goes on top of everything except the units. The units are always on the top layer, so you don't have to worry about you know your borders covering them or anything like that. So uh, then you have your little units. Uh, this is a 50 by 50. Well, the the whole thing is, but it seems to be stretching it because obviously this little icon is smaller than 55 50 pixels. So, but that has to be on a transparent background because if you made it white like that, it would take the whole 50 by 50 white block with your little icon in it. And that is why you need a PNG file because it keeps that alpha channel. It uh, holds on to the transparency. So, uh, the map is good to go, and I guess this will just be a short video, and the next one will be actual gameplay. Now, bear in mind, I have not playtested this, I have no idea if these uh, army sizes are appropriate. If the game is balanced, I highly doubt it. Um, I basically just made them sort of as I felt like you've got four here in the Shire to represent the hobbits, and here in Bree is where uh, Aragorn is, and then over here is where the rest of the Fellowship is, and, you know, Isengard, I added orcs here, and the uh, Dune Lendings, I think, is what they're called, because uh, Saruman does bring these people into uh, his army, allies with them, I didn't want to make it overwhelming at the beginning, but I did put in a lot of people in Mordor and sort of up here in Gondor. Not so much down here. But I had <laughs> I had two wikis open and like three or four different maps. So all the names, all the placements of the NPCs uh, it's it's all based on something. I made it for a reason, the way it is. But uh, we will find out if it can actually be played this way. It might be horribly unfair. We will see. So, next video.